Welcome all, my name is Devin Knight. Welcome back to Pragmatic Works channel. And if you have been keeping up with Microsoft Copilot, you are seeing some of the biggest news to Copilot to date since its announcement this week was all around new changes to how Copilot could work and really opening the door for all businesses, not just large businesses, but all businesses to be able to use Copilot. So what I wanna do for you in this video is one, fill you in on some of those major announcements that came this week, but also walk you through how do you actually set up Copilot in your environment? How do you buy it? It wasn't something you could easily even buy before, but now you can purchase Copilot on your own with inside of Microsoft's Administration Center. And then also, how do you then see the results of you buying it whenever you actually go within tools like Word and PowerPoint, things like that. So first, let's talk about the major announcements this week. The big news is that Copilot has been opened up to the masses. It's not free, but there is many new capabilities within inside of Copilot and, and really the idea of removing limitations that there were before that were holding back some businesses and individuals from using Copilot. So first, let's talk about individuals. As an individual, if you would like to use Copilot, you can now do that. I actually have the blog open on my screen right now. In this blog, it details a new SKU that's been added to Copilot called Copilot Pro. You can see that here. Copilot Pro is meant for the individual. In fact, let me make this even larger for you so you can really see this. Copilot Pro is really for the individual. It's $20 a month, and that allows you to have access to many of the Copilot capabilities that you're seeing in Outlook, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, all of those things that you're seeing, these really neat videos, you can do on your own as an individual. However, if you wanna kinda of get this access throughout all of your files, this integration with all of the things that you do with inside of Office, you really need to look at the more enterprise version. That's Copilot for Microsoft 365. That's the one that is behind my head. And in fact, let me take myself away here for a moment. So Copilot for Microsoft 365 has some additional capabilities that lets it scrounge across your entire Microsoft graph. You might be asking yourself, what in the world does that mean? What that capability gives you is you can actually be inside of PowerPoint and you can say, create me a PowerPoint presentation based on this OneNote document that I have stored somewhere completely different. So the really neat thing that Microsoft uh, or Copilot for Microsoft 365 allows you to do is the interconnectivity amongst all of your different apps that you have and not just within the context of the tool you're looking at. So there's a lot of really, really neat capabilities that you get. Now, Microsoft 365 uh, Copilot is not new. It's been around for a little bit. However, the major change that they've made to it is they have now opened it up to even smaller businesses. The initial release of Microsoft uh, Copilot for uh, Microsoft, Copilot for Microsoft 365 was only available to organizations that had at least 300 individuals that they wanted to assign a license to. And you had to commit to it for a year. Uh, that year commitment is still there. However, the nice thing is you don't have that limitation anymore of 300 licenses. If you're a small business of five people, of one person, you can sign up for the Copilot for Microsoft 365 option that you see on the far right. And that way you also get that interconnectivity across all of your different applications that you use with inside of Office. And there's some really, really neat stuff you can do with it. We're gonna show you some of those things over the course of several videos coming up, but really that's the major announcement for today. The major announcement is a new SKU for the individual, so that would be kind of your at-home use potentially. And then the second announcement there is the limitations that have been removed. You can see that part highlighted right here. There's no longer a minimum number of users that you have to have to use Copilot for Microsoft 365. All right, so major announcement there. The other thing that's worth lightly mentioning here as well is previously you had to have M365, Microsoft 365, but you can also be an Office 365 E3 or E5 user to also take advantage of Copilot. So again, it's expanded the breadth of who can use this. Office 365 is a little bit of an older SKU, but there's still many people that are still on it. Uh, and so if you are one of those businesses that's still on the Office rather than the Microsoft 365 SKU, you have the ability to also access Copilot for Microsoft 365. So really great news, that minimum of 300 users limitation being removed is a big one, not only for small businesses everywhere, but even us at Pragmatic Works, uh, we're excited about that one as well. So let's say you've decided now that this limitation has been removed that you are ready to try Copilot. What do you need to do? Well, when you're ready to start Copilot, you're gonna need to work with your administrator to purchase it. It's something you have to go purchase. It's not for free. 
Uh, you saw I had some pricing on the screen earlier, and if you wanna be able to have access to it, you're gonna need a paid license to be able to do it. So if you are interested in exploring and getting that paid license, you'll need to work with your administrator. And your administrator, what they're gonna need to do is they're gonna go to admin.microsoft.com, admin.microsoft.com. And this is where you can purchase new services from Microsoft. Again, not everyone has access to this. This is, again, something you'll work with your administrator on being able to navigate and get to. You'll go to admin.microsoft.com. Once you navigate there, you're gonna go to the billing section. And underneath billing on the far left, you'll see there's an option here called purchase services. That's where you can purchase new services that perhaps you don't have already, or maybe you wanna add additional licenses. That all is gonna be done under the purchase services section. So if I go ahead and select purchase services, we will have, a mo I'll need to select my billing account. So I have two different billing accounts. I did have a little bit of a glitch that one of the billing accounts did not have it available while the other one did. I don't know, that might've just been a me thing, not necessarily you. But if I select my top billing account here, I can then actually search over here on the far right, I can search for Copilot and see the Copilot services that are available for me to buy. So do a quick search there for Copilot. And the one that we're interested in for today's video is this one right here, Microsoft Copilot for Microsoft 365. You'll notice the starting price here, that there is no free trial on this one like there is many of the other services. This is a you must buy, no trial available. So if I select details, I can then go in and actually make a purchase of this. So you can select the length of the subscription. You can actually buy three years in advance. I noticed it didn't look like you got any discount for buying three years in advance, but you could do that if for budgeting purposes it made sense to do that. But you can select one year, and then you can see how much it's gonna cost you here. Now I've already done this once. You can also adjust, by the way, the quantity of licenses. You'll notice as you adjust the quantity, that also increases the subtotal there as well. And then you would go through and hit buy again, and that would buy you additional licenses. Now for me, I've already purchased licenses, and so I would go to the Manage section here. I've already done this once. I don't need to buy more. And I can actually see underneath the Manage section, I have two licenses that I purchased just to test things out so far. And if I wanted to assign those licenses to someone, I can do that by going to the Assign Licenses section right here. So that would allow me to see the number of licenses I have available. Right now I have zero available because I have two out of two already assigned. But I could go to the Assign section here and I could pick which users I want to allocate my licenses to. All right, again, right now I have zero available, so I would need to go buy more, but you can see the two users here. It's me, it's Brian, uh, within Pragmatic Works that have purchased licenses. So very cool stuff uh, that you can very easily purchase now. Before, not so long ago, it was not an easy thing to purchase the uh, Microsoft 365 Copilot licenses. Now it's been made a lot easier to do. Now, once you've purchased that, you will also be sent an email. So there'll actually be a notification once you assign a license that you're gonna be uh, sending an email to your users that you're assigning. And what that email looks like is something like this. So let me bring this up on the screen here for you. They will receive an email that looks like this. It tells them what's in store for you. It tells them all the things that you can, well, all the areas where you can use Copilot. Uh, you can see them all kind of listed here. And it gives you an examples of how Copilot can be used if you look carefully over here on the left side of my screen. So lots of ways it can be used. Now, one of the roadblocks that I struggle with a little bit is after purchasing Copilot, how do I actually see it in the client tools? How do I see it when I open up Word? How do I see it when I open up PowerPoint? Because it wasn't there initially. In fact, whenever I want to go open up Word, just to kind of give you a little peek at what I did next, my first thing was, great, I can go launch Word and I can start to use Copilot. Uh, unfortunately not. Uh, what you would experience once you open Word is you would go launch, open a blank Word document, and you're expecting to be able to see Copilot appear up here in the top right, but it's not there. The reason why it's missing is you need to basically essentially refresh your licensing here. And so what you would need to do to make sure that Word knows you have a Copilot license, you would need to go to the File menu in the top left. So go up to File, and then all the way on the bottom, you're gonna go to Account. So I'll select Account here. And then within inside of the account section, you're gonna select the update license option found right here. Once you do that, that will let your office client on your workstation know that you have this new Copilot license. So if I select that, give that a moment, sign in. All right, so I have signed in. It says I need to restart. So I'm gonna go ahead and close Word, relaunch Word. 
and I'll bring it over to the correct screen. Looks like it's already there. I should be able to create a blank document now and look what I have here. You can see in the middle of my screen right here, as well as up in the top right hand corner of my screen up here, I have the Copilot options now available to me and I can start to utilize them right away. We'll have some further videos about how to actually utilize Copilot. This one's more about getting it turned on, getting it enabled. And what you noticed there was we had to kind of activate our license to refresh it. And next time we opened up uh, Word, it now has that available. You may experience that same thing in PowerPoint and OneNote. You may have to do the same thing that I just showed. Again, those steps were we went over to the file menu, go to account, and then update license right here. That will kind of refresh your license with inside of Office, and you should be able to see the Copilot features after that. Now, there's a few other quirks that I found as well whenever you're working in tools like Outlook. So I'm not going to bring up my Outlook where I have all my email. But when you're inside Outlook, you do need to be using the new Outlook. You might be like me and have been avoiding using it for some time. If you want to have access to the Copilot features with inside of Outlook, you're going to have to toggle that switch in the top right to switch to the new Outlook to be able to use it. And then when it comes to Teams, I got one more tip for you. Uh, what I had to do was actually sign out of Teams and sign back into Teams. And after I did that, Copilot showed up just fine. So consider making those quick little changes, and then you should be good to go. You'll find Copilot available in all of your client tools after at that point, and you can start to utilize it. Now, we will have some future videos on utilizing and interacting with Copilot. Hang tight. We will have those coming uh, very soon. Obviously, Copilot's a very popular topic right now, so you'll have the place to come here with us at Pragmatic Works. Make sure you like and subscribe so you can have those videos come directly to you. And we look forward to seeing you in some of those future Copilot videos. See you then. Thanks a lot.